This video will be an introduction to redox reactions, otherwise known as oxidation-reduction reactions. These kinds of reactions involve a transfer of electrons. One substance loses electrons, and one substance gains electrons. Oxidation is a loss of electrons, whereas reduction is a gain of electrons. So the electrons that are lost by one compound are gained by another. So oxidation, a loss of electrons, reduction, a gain of electrons. Many of the reactions we've already seen are also redox reactions. Single replacement reactions are redox reactions, combustion are, and some synthesis and de decomposition. We'll kind of look at them individually later. In order to work with redox reactions, you need to assign oxidation numbers. It helps to keep track of where the electrons are going. It tells us what's oxidized and what's reduced. And it helps to balance the equations more easily. So let's learn the rules for oxidation numbers. The first rule is that the oxidation numbers of monatomic ions is their charge. So a monatomic ion is something like Na+. So Na+, plus, the Na in there, has a plus one oxidation number. In this case, it's the same as the charge. Calcium is plus 2, copper 1 is plus 1, copper 2 is plus 2. The second rule is that the oxidation number of any element or diatomic molecule is 0. So just find copper, 0, bromine, 0, 0, 0. The third rule is when I have an alkali metal in a compound, the alkali metal is plus 1. So this sodium has an oxidation number of plus 1. You'll note that I'm always writing the oxidation numbers above the element. Alkaline earth metals, when they're in a compound, are plus 2. So calcium has a plus 2 oxidation number. And then there's a few that always have the same oxidation number. We've seen them before. Um, these are the transition metals that don't have a Roman numeral. Zinc is plus 2. Cadmium is plus 2. Silver is plus 1. Aluminum is plus 3. Fourth rule is that when you have oxygen in a compound, it's going to be minus 2. Okay? It's minus 2 like 99% of the time. There is an exception, and that's when we talk about peroxides, like hydrogen peroxide and sodium peroxide. In this case, the O is minus 1. We're almost never going to see this, but it is an exception. When you have hydrogen in a compound, its oxidation number is plus 1. So hydrogen is plus 1 here, plus 1, plus 1. Again, that's going to be true about 99% of the time. There is an exception, and that's hydrides. So when the hydrogen is first, that's an acid, and it's plus 1. When the hydrogen comes second, that's the hydride. Sodium hydride, calcium hydride. So the, so the hydrogen will actually be minus 1. Again, we won't see this very often, but it is an exception. So to put all this together, when you have a molecule, the oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. So what we do is we look at the ones that we know and use them to figure out the other ones. For instance, we know that hydrogen is plus one and oxygen is minus two. So what I'm going to do is keep track of my math down below here. I have three O's and they're each minus two, so there's a minus six. There's one hydrogen and it's plus one, so I have a plus one. So in order for this to add up to zero, the nitrogen must be plus five. Okay, always write the oxidation numbers above your elements and do any math that you want to do below. Same here now, H2SO4, we know H is plus one and O is minus two. So I've got a plus two here and a minus eight. So what's sulfur going to be? Well, it's going to be plus six because the whole thing has to add up to zero. All right, all that adds zero. Um, for this here, I've got minus 2 for sulfate, for the oxygen and sulfate. Now, if you don't know what copper is, it might help to break this into its two ions. Okay, and you can see that it's Cu2 plus um, and SO4 2 minus. So the copper is 2 plus, plus 2 up here. So I've got a minus 8 and a plus 2, so the sulfur must be plus 6. Okay, over here um, aluminum is plus 3 
So each one of these chlorines is minus 1, because I have a plus 3 and a minus 3. So they have to add up to 0. Now when I have an ion, like our polyatomic ions, the oxidation numbers have to add up to the charge on the atom. So here, oxygen is minus 2, so I've got a minus 8, and the whole thing has to equal minus 2, because that's the charge. So sulfur must be plus 6. Okay, that makes sense? Over here for perchlorate, oxygen is minus 2. I've got a minus 8. The whole thing has to equal minus 1. So chlorine must be plus 7. And then phosphate, minus 2, minus 8. This is four of them. Equals minus 3. So the phosphorus must be plus 5. Now, there's one more rule, which isn't really a rule, because I kind of made it up, but it can be helpful. Every once in a while, you run across a compound where you're just, you're just not sure um, where to start, because none of the rules apply. But if it has a halogen in it, okay, they are often normally, almost always, minus 1. So copper and chloride, there's no rule to apply to that, but if we assume that chloride is minus 1, then copper is plus 2, and that is actually true. Here, SF6, if we assume fluorine is minus 1, sulfur is plus 6. If we assume chlorine is minus 1, nitrogen is plus 3. If we assume chloride is minus 1, lead is plus 4. So those are oxidation numbers, and in the next uh, video we'll talk about what the heck we do with those.